Capillary tubes. Hey, this is a type of metering device that's used in um, small commercial refrigeration equipment like um, reach-in uh, ref cooler boxes or uh, small prep tables. And the capillary tube is used because it's a rather inexpensive type of metering device and it um, works very well for this type of application. The one thing about um, the systems that have capillary tubes, it's designed to maintain the temperature of the product, really not to drop the temperature of the product. So at the beginning of the day, uh, for example, at a pizza restaurant, they'll take out all the toppings for the pizza from a walk-in cooler and they'll put it in their little prep table cooler or a small reach-in box and they're already putting the cold product into the box and the box does a great job of maintaining the temperature, not a very good job of um, dropping the temperature. So the capillary tube falls in the category of a fixed metering device and like all metering devices it um, regulates refrigerant flow by dropping the pressure and unlike a fixed orifice or a TXV that pressure drop is determined by the length of the cap tube and um, the diameter of the cap tube. Now here's a great example of how a uh, cap tube works. It's just like it's just like your garden hose. If you have 100 psi of pressure coming out of your spigot and 25 feet of hose, for example, you'll have 75 um, psi of water coming out the end of the hose. And the reason this happens is because of the friction of this hose um, drops the pressure of the water coming out. Now you take that same water spigot at 100 psi and put on 200 feet of hose. You probably already had this happen. Uh, you hardly have any water coming out of the end. This is the same principle as uh, cap tube. So the longer the cap tube is, the more the pressure drop is. Now it uh, provides a consistent pressure drop. So as the condensing pressure goes up, the evaporator pressure will go up and vice versa. So when the condensing pressure goes down, so will the evaporator pressure. Now here's an, uh, an example of a um, cap tube and uh, uh, many times these cap tubes in the system will be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten feet long depending on the application and these inside di diameters are going to be very, very small and basically that's it, it just a tiny tube um, where the refrigerant flows in one end and out the other. Okay, so here is a um, some information from JB Industries, and there they manufacture cap tubes. And this is one thing to remember um, when you're taking a look at a cap tube system: that the cap tubes um, depend on their length as well as their, their diameter to um, determine the total pressure drop or restriction. So, um, if you have a change in diameter and you put the wrong cap tube in, even by um, less than five one hundredths or five one thousandths of an inch, it is going to um, double the flow of, of the refrigerant. So you need to really make sure that um, if you're replacing a cap tube, you have the right one. So you have to remember this, the longer the tube, the slower the flow, the shorter the tube, the faster the flow of refrigerant. Okay, so Sometimes it's uh, pretty easy when you have to replace a cap tube. Um, you can check with the equipment manufacturer with the model and serial number of the piece of refrigeration equipment. And if it's, it's not available, you can get the uh, size of the equipment from the compressor. So what you would do is, an ex here's an example, you have a, a one-third horsepower unit and you want to keep the evaporator temperature at 15 degrees and the existing cap tube size is 0.036 inches inside diameter and six feet long. So here's what you do. So you can't get a hold of the manufacturer. You, you, they don't want to wait and if you do the customer doesn't want to wait a, a week for you to get it ordered and get it in. So here's what you what you do is you take your you look for the one-third horsepower. Let's go back. So we have the one-third horsepower unit R22 system. The, 
the operating temperature is 15 or excuse me 5 to 20 degrees so you go back here we're at 15 degrees evaporator and this tells you that for the JB chart and this works for all cap tube manufacturers um, that you need six feet of model number TC 36 <clears throat> so um, there's also a conversion chart and this is again where someone doesn't want to wait to see if you can get uh, doesn't want to wait for days to get the proper sized um, cap tube in from the manufacturer so let's take a look at how the conversion chart would work uh, you know that you have nine feet of point uh, 0 0.04 cap tube is needed and you can only get 0 0.036 cap tube um, at your local supply house um, or maybe you can only get 0 0.42 0 0.042 so let's take a look so here's how this works here's the original tubing and I'm going to show you how you can figure out the inside diameter of the tubing later but um, it's 0.4 inches 0.04 inches so the only cap tubes you can get are either 0.036 inches or 0.042 inches and they just have a multiplier down here so you read over from the original size and you read up to the size that's available and there's a multiplier of 0.62 so you, if there's nine feet of, of 0.04 inch diameter cap tube you multiply it by 0.62 and it tells you you need five and a half feet of this size cap tube and also if you have only 0.042 that you can get here's your multiplier same thing nine feet times 1.25 equals 11 and a quarter inches of cap tube so if you get in a pinch and you can't find the exact diameter there are conversion charts that'll allow you to do that Okay, one of the things to remember, if, if it has a larger diameter, you have to have a longer piece of cap tube to get the same amount of pressure drop. And if it has a smaller diameter, it has to be shorter. So just keep that in mind when you're, um, if you have to resize to a different um, size cap tube. It's a good, here's a good example. Uh, 0.031 inch cap tube has the same pressure drop at five feet as a cap tube that is only five one thousandths of an inch larger. So look at this, five feet at 0.031 is equivalent to 10 feet of 0.036 and 21 feet of 0.042 inch cap tube. So each one of these examples gives the same pressure drop um, to the evaporator coil. Okay, so for a cap tube system to work, you need to make sure that it is sized properly and the evaporator load must be at design conditions. Remember we talked about they it is only designed to maintain the temperature of product that is removed from um, a cooler, a walk-in cooler, and put in there to be used throughout the day. So if you put in uh, uh, several heads of lettuce that were at room temperature, it might take a day for it to cool it down. It just doesn't um, work very well under those conditions. Uh, refrigerant charge is critical, and such a since a, such a, since a small uh, system and so little refrigerant, it's really easy for the charge to be off and there must be a full column of liquid to the cap tube that's also important but that that's tied to the refrigerant charge okay so if you have a cap tube system and it's flooding here's some of the things that cause it and one of the things you want to keep in mind when you're working on a cap tube system these are small small refrigeration systems and every time you need to try and avoid to putting your gauges on because every when you take the gauge off you lose refrigerant and there's such little refrigerant that can affect the system quite a bit so what you need to do is use your head and use your eyes 
So if you have too much high side pressure, and you can do that by clamping your uh, temperature probe on there, you need to look for a dirty condenser and it's a possible refrigerant overcharge. Um, the incorrectly sized cap tube, you're not really going to find that unless you've talked to the uh, owner of this equipment and they just had someone recently work on it and replace the cap tube. That would be when you'd want to check that. And low evaporator load, that's just when you have um, dirty or iced evaporator, bad fan motor, or you have a really um, low box temperature. Okay, so starving cap tube system. So th this is when um, the door's left open for too long and or they have a bad door seal, so you need to look at that. You also need to ask what when did they put the uh, product in the box? Did it come from a cooler or did they just take it from room temperature and put it in a box? Again, it can take 24 hours for that to cool that um, product down. Of course, if it's low on refrigerant, that's going to cause the problem. And again, incorrectly sized cap tube. And that's if someone has replaced it and made a mistake. You won't normally find that if it's a um, system that's been operating properly for years on end. Okay, so the most common cause of cap tubes problems, refrigeration problems, is the blocking of the cap tube. And that's because the um, cap tube inside diameter is so small that, that, it, that it can get plugged up. Here's what it looks like. Um, this right here is connected to the outlet of the compressor. And this is where you have the um, liquid coming in, subcooled liquid refrigerant coming in to the um, filter dryer. Now this is a tiny filter dryer and has this beaded desiccant and sometimes these the uh, powder and such can flake off of these beads or they'll crack and a little piece will come off and the, it'll clog the inlet of the cap tube. So you can you can check that by checking the temperature drop from from the inlet to, to the uh, cap tube to the you know, a few inches down, and if you see a large temperature drop, you know that this part of the cap tube is, is blocked off. So what you do is you cut off an inch or two of the cap tube right here and um, unbraze the plugged portion and then braze in uh, the rest of the cap tube. Now an inch or so of cap tube isn't going to make a big difference on your um, the pressure drop and affect the, the temperature of the system very very much so um, you're, sa you're safe to do that. The one thing you need to make sure that you do is you push in enough of this cap tube so that when you braze um, it doesn't plug up this small end and you also need to make sure that you don't push it in too far so it's not s smashed up against the screen that holds the desk in. in. Okay so when you're going to be uh, cutting a tap cap tube don't use tubing cutty cutters you need to score it and then you put it between your um, you score the cap tube and you hold it between your thumb and forefingers with both hands and then you could snap it off. And there's also um, uh, cutters for the cap tube which are much easier to use. So here's what you use. Use a file to score it or your cap tube cutting tool. Alright, so if you use a tubing cutter it's going to compre compress the inside diameter of the cap tube and that's going to cause issues with your pressure drops. Okay, so just before we finish up, if you're on a system and you can't find a the size of the cap tube, um, there are cap tube diameter checkers so that you can slide it on here and check the outside diameter of the cap tube and then they have the little keys here to slide into the cap tube um, to see what, what size it is. So that's it, 15 minutes on the... Um, uh, capillary, capillary tube metering device. Any questions, please email me or um, get on the free student forum and ask some questions. Thanks a lot.